Uh, there, today I'm going to talk about a developmental network and how to interpret various mutations that uh, can disrupt it. So here we have our pathway that leads to spiky cells in the ectoderm. Uh, so below is the key that we will use uh, where the arrow indicates that the gene previous is activating it and the T-bar is inhibiting the gene following it. So for our pathway here for spiky cells, uh, we have the S gene activates the P gene, which P then activates I, I inhibits K and prevents it from inhibiting the E gene. So then the E gene is allowed to activate the spiky cell. Uh, so for a P gene mutation, uh, with the P gene not being there, uh, the I gene is not activated. Uh, which leads to the K gene being activated, and so K then inhibits the E gene, and therefore no spiky cells are made. For the I mutation, uh, the K gene, with the I being gone, the K gene is activated. Uh, K gene then inhibits the E gene, therefore preventing it from making spikes, leaving us with smooth cells. So for the I and E mutation, so without I, K is activated, which would then inhibit E, but because E is also mutated and E is essential for producing the spikes, we see no spikes in that cell. So for an S and K mutation, uh, S is not able to activate P, which then means P does not activate I, K is then therefore not inhibited, uh, but because we have a mutation in K, E still functions and we have spikes. So why don't all cells in the ectoderm have spikes? Uh, physiologically, spikes on every cell would inhibit their movement. Um, so some cells would have a mechanism to inhibit certain parts of the pathway, like the P gene, to produce smooth cells as opposed to spiky cells. Uh, on this next slide here, I have my references. Thank you so much for watching.